Well, in case you couldn't guess, I'm Scott and this is a nickel metal hydride battery comparison. I'm going to save you the time watching the whole video if you just want to know the results, which is probably why you're here. I would recommend either the Amazon high capacity cells, the EBL 2300 milliamp hour cells, and or the Sunlabs 2800 milliamp hour cells. These are all AA batteries. I didn't test uh, AAAs or anything else. I was just looking for double A's. And at the prices right now, it's $21.99 for a 16 pack of the EBL batteries. Um, that is really cheap. In fact, uh, it's the cheapest of all of them and they're uh, pretty decent batteries to boot. So you're paying about half the price, I think, of the Eneloop Pros and getting nearly as much capacity per cell. And if you lose these, it hurts a lot less because they're a lot cheaper. So right now, let me show you how I tested these and uh, the results in more detail, if that's what you want. So let me uh, go over to myself in uh, narration land. Uh, thanks, me. To test the cells, I'm using the Opus BTC3400 that you see here, which can both charge and discharge four cells independently at a selectable current. Charging was done at 300 milliamps, while the discharge test you see here was done at 700 milliamps. I recorded each of these test cycles at one frame of video every 5 seconds, and since it's being played back at 24 frames per second, you're seeing this happen at 120 times actual speed. It took up to 3.5 hours to discharge each group of cells, which means this testing took nearly 30 hours to complete in total. Of course, repeating the test for each group of cells would have led to more accurate results, but there are plenty of other things wrong with this testing that I'll get into later, and time was a factor. However, this should prove to be a solid guide at the very least if you're in the market for NIMH cells. As you can probably guess, they're ordered from lowest capacity to highest, with the XIT cells on the top left being the undisputed king of shittiness. Initially, you might think the Sunlab cells on the bottom right are therefore the best, but there's more to it than just capacity. There's one thing that I can't practically test, and that's charge cycles. A lot of cells claim to be designed for around 2,000 charges and discharges, but even at a full amp of current, it could take well over 400 days of constant testing to achieve that many cycles. That's not feasible for me to do, so to judge the longevity, you're best off going with user reviews and on your own propensity for losing batteries. So, as you just saw, the XIT cells ran out of juice well before any of the others. And both the XIT and Acuvar cells are an absolute embarrassment because they claim to have a capacity of 3100 milliamp hours, but only delivered 1248 and 1758 respectively. They're not even the cheapest per amp hour, even though they're the cheapest to buy outright. That's why I'm representing cost per amp hour here rather than the actual purchase price. I mean, you're paying for storage capacity, not for tubes of chemicals, you know? I should point out that the pricing here reflects the cost on Amazon as of September 14th, 2016 and only includes sellers offering prime shipping. The higher cost represented on the larger font is based upon the price of a 4-pack, and the low cost is based upon a 16-pack. Since not everyone needs 16 cells at a time, I figured I'd show both. The Tenergy cells were the cheapest when purchased in a pack of 4 and the second cheapest in a pack of 16. If capacity isn't that much of an issue for you, for example in a non-critical and low current device like a remote control, then they do just fine. But having the third worst capacity here, I'm going to stay away because I don't want to have to worry about which cells I need to use for which devices. The Tenergies also lose points for me for coming in at just 83% of the rated capacity, also the third worst in that sense. The Energizer cells are pretty unremarkable except that they're at the top of the percentage of standard deviation. To get that figure, I determined the standard deviation between the four cells of each brand, and then divided that by their actual capacity and represented it as a percentage. The point of all that is to show how consistent the cells are to one another. The Energizer cells all showed a capacity very close to their average of 2007 milliamp hours. To me, that indicates a consistent and high quality manufacturing process, which likewise may indicate a long life of charge cycles. Then again, it could be a fluke, but I thought I'd share. If consistency is important to you, then they're the winner. Panasonic's Eneloop cells are highly rated and well known for their quality, consistency, and reliability. They are among the most expensive though. They are also the only cells to come in above their rating of 2000 milliamp hours and earn points with me for that. They're also third in consistency and middle of the road in overall capacity, though again, they deliver as promised. 
The Duracells are the worst as far as consistency goes, and they're among the most expensive. They also came in at just 88% of the rated capacity. I wouldn't recommend them for simply being mediocre. Now the EBLs are interesting. At the time of creating these figures, they have the lowest cost per amp hour by far when purchased in a pack of 16, and at that quantity, the initial acquisition cost is also the lowest. That's likely to change, but nonetheless, they deliver a reasonable capacity, and at 94% of their rating, they're also the third most honest. And even when buying a 4-pack, they're the third cheapest, only slightly behind the Tenergies and the irrelevant Acuvars. As far as value for money goes, in my opinion, the EBLs are the best here at these prices, and I would buy more of them should the need arise. The Amazon cells are a strong competitor. Reasonably priced, 92% of rated capacity, with a high overall capacity. They're also highly rated by consumers for quality, and Amazon has a good track record in general with NIMH cells. They also come in pretty well on consistency. I don't think you can go wrong with these. The Eneloop Pros are probably the Cadillac of NIMH cells. You know, if Cadillac were still the best at cars. I was surprised that they came in just under their minimum rated capacity, but at 99%, I can't really fault them. That could be due to testing inaccuracy or just a mediocre batch. I also figured they'd be at the top of the consistency chart, but instead they had a middling showing at 1.8%. They're also nearly the most expensive in small quantity, and the most expensive even at their bulk price. While they're certainly good sales and probably will be at the top of the pack for charge-discharge cycles, I still think they're behind on value for money. That is, unless you plan on really abusing your cells and never losing them. The Sun Labs only came in a bit higher than the Eneloop Pro's capacity, and they're even more expensive when purchased four at a time. However, they come in at the low end of pricing when buying 16, and they're pretty consistent as well. But I am a little turned off that they're advertised as having a 2800 milliamp hour capacity, but only clock in at 88% of that. Nonetheless, they seem to be an excellent value for money when purchased in bulk, and will run your devices for the longest out of all of these. So in summary, my opinion is that at the right price, you can't go wrong with the EBL, Amazon, or Sunlab cells. At the price of $21.99 for a 16-pack, which is $1.37 per cell or $0.64 cents per amp hour, the EBLs are my current top pick. If you want the top-of-the-line brand name cells, the standard or pro Eneloops are probably your best bet, and which one you buy would depend on the capacity you want. I've had 24 of the standard 4th generation Eneloops pictured here running in various devices for over a year, and I haven't had an issue with a single cell. Even though Energizer and Duracell are household names, their NIMH batteries gave mediocre performance at high prices. Seeing as you could currently buy two EBL cells for the price of one of those branded cells, I think writing them off is a no-brainer. Hopefully that was enough detail for you. It was probably too much detail, but uh, I'm glad you're still watching. I have some notes here because uh, there's a lot of stuff I want to say about these. I mean, they're just NIMH cells or batteries, whatever you want to call them. In fact, both terms are kind of correct. I mean, technically they're cells, and when you put a bunch of cells together and connect them up in series or parallel or however you want to connect them, that's a battery. Each one of these individual ones is a cell, but everyone calls them batteries. Duracell and Panasonic both call them batteries on their own sites. So, uh, you know, if you want to be pedantic, you could say these aren't batteries, they're cells, and I tried to call them cells whenever possible just to be correct, but I don't know, call them batteries if you want. I'm going to call them both. Oh, and by the way, um, most of these cells said they have a thousand charge discharge cycles, not two thousand like I said in the narration. I think the, uh, I forget which ones are rated for two thousand, but one or two of these is rated for two thousand. And anyway, it doesn't really matter because you're never going to reach a thousand. I mean, that's a lot of charges and discharges. If these are in like a solar light or something that recharges every single night, um, or rather recharges during the day and discharges every single night, I mean, maybe you'd get to a thousand because if you have the light for three years, but chances are if a light uses NAMH batteries and you put it outside, it's not going to last three years anyway. So, I mean, going through a thousand charge and discharge, discharge cycles is probably never going to happen. I'm probably never going to do it because I'm going to lose some of these batteries before they have a chance to go through that many. Just want to get that out there. It seems like an important specification, but it's really not, and I'm wagering for most of these batteries, it's pretty much BS anyway. Maybe the uh, Panasonics are good for what they say, but for example, the Tenergies, I don't know. Um, I just want to say again, these Acuvar and XIT cells, you're going to see them for sale. I'm pretty sure they're made by the same company. 
uh, they're just crap. They say 3,100 milliamp hours. That's not even possible, as far as I know, using NIMH technology in a double A size cell. So 3,100 milliamp hours, if you see that on any cell, just don't buy it. It's probably a lie. I'm not too happy about the, the Sunlab cells saying 2,800, even though they are decent overall. I don't like the fact that they're lying to me. I mean, I don't know, based on the Wikipedia article, I don't even think 2,800 is a realistic figure. Uh, maybe in magical fairyland, but not in real life. Uh, another thing I hated about the XIT and Acuvar cells is that they came in this kind of blister packaging, which you can't open without uh, cutting your hand and or the packaging with a sharp knife. See, I had to cut all the way around just to get to the freaking cells. And like I said, I think they're made by the same company because they both say, uh, well, the back of both of them is pretty much the same. One's in a little more vibrant color, but... Uh, pretty much identical. And obviously the packaging is shaped differently. This one has a cutout, this one doesn't, but pretty sure they're made by the same company and they're all shit. And if you want details on all that testing I just did, um, as far as the battery's actual capacity and all that crap, I have a spreadsheet on my website, s.co.tt slash nimh test, let's call it. Uh, just go to that link down there. And you could either get a Google Docs version of the spreadsheet, which is read-only just for ease of opening, and I also have an Excel, Excel version that you can download and play with yourself. Well, not play, with, play with yourself, that doesn't sound right. Um, you know what I mean. And finally, the last thing I gotta do here is a bunch of disclaimers. Now, it's not like legally is disclaimers. I was telling my wife about this testing, and she's a scientist, and she said that's not very scientific. And I agree with her completely. It's not very scientific, but I'm not going for a completely accurate, like, you know, publishable result here. I just want you guys to see generally which these batteries perform well and which don't. And I think this accomplished that. So despite these disclaimers, I don't really think this whole video was pointless. And most of these disclaimers are going to apply to any testing you see in a YouTube video or in an Amazon review or anywhere else online. Because, uh... It's just general stuff that's not really accomplishable by one person in a basement uh, in a realistic t uh, period of time. All right, I'm going to go off my notes on this one because uh, there's a lot of things. I just want to make sure I hit all of them. Look, my testing may not match the manufacturer's methodology for testing. So, like when EBL tests these cells and they say they're good for 2,300 milliamp hours, they might test them in a completely different way than I did. You know, maybe it is 2,300 milliamp hours under certain conditions and I didn't meet those conditions. So. When I say that these manufacturers are lying, it's kind of like iffy. I mean, Acuvar and uh, XIT cells, those are definitely lying. I mean, just outright bold-faced lies. 2300 milliamp hours with the EBLs, that's a realistic figure. So it's quite possible that my testing didn't match the manufacturers and that's why it's off. Now, the device I'm using for testing might be inaccurate. Um, it was 50 bucks, which is like a lot for a battery charger and tester and it was well reviewed. So I'm hoping that it was pretty accurate. Uh, might not have been 100%, but close enough for the purposes of just deciding which battery to buy. Um, all of these tests were done in a climate controlled environment about 76 degrees Fahrenheit. So at least that was consistent. I don't know if that's the ideal temperature for charging and discharging cells. Manufacturers might use different ones, who knows? If you see other testing online, maybe someone did it at 50 degrees and got completely different results. All right, now I only bought, for the most part, four of each of these brand and type of cells. So it's possible that I got a bad batch of four. I mean, you know, maybe uh, these just, well, not the Amazons, those were pretty good. Maybe the Dura cells came off a bad manufacturing run and uh, I just happened to get unlucky here. So maybe you would find uh, different results with some of these. But also based on reviews and what I've seen online, I think I'm pretty much in the ballpark. The cells were all charged in the same charger with the same settings. It's the one you saw in the video. It's not just good for discharging, it's also a charger. Um, it's possible that a defect in the charger could have caused some cells to charge more than others. Uh, when I put them in, it does say the voltage of each cell and they were pretty much, again, in the same ballpark, around 1.3 volts. Um, some of the cells that I got arrived pre-charged, uh, the Eneloop Pros and the Amazon Basics. I did top them up in the charger because they can lose some uh, charge while they're in storage. Um, you might see a lot of these cells say low self-discharge. That means that they won't discharge, or well, if it's low self-discharge, they won't discharge quite as vigorously if they're just left alone in a drawer. And you can read up on the specs for that. Again, I'm not going to test that because a lot of them say like 65% charge after three years in storage. I don't have three years to run this test. so. 
you'll have to go with reviews on that um, or just top them up in a charger before you use them. All right, now one thing I'm not 100% sure about is that these might perform differently after some charge discharge cycles. Now I don't know what, whether they'd perform better or worse. I mean, certainly after a long life, they're not gonna charge to quite as high a capacity. But uh, maybe after a few charges and discharges, uh, they would have a, they would reach their maximum capacity. Not 100% sure about that. So these were all fresh batteries on their first charge with the exception of the standard Enel loops. And you'll note that in the testing, they did achieve a higher uh, capacity than the rating, but only by a small amount. And the Eneloop Pros came extremely close at 99% of their claim capacity. So um, I think the Eneloops are just higher quality than most of the other cells. Not that uh, me cycling them actually made a difference. Um, and finally, and I'm sorry that was a lot, and thank you for sticking with me. Um, it's possible that these cells may perform differently at different currents. I drained all of them at 700 milliamps. Maybe if I did 300 milliamps, some of them would have had a slightly higher capacity because of their discharge curve, maybe because they wouldn't have gotten as hot, so I don't know. I'm not an expert on nickel metal, ah, I'm not an expert on nickel metal hydride chemistry, but it's just something to keep in mind. Um, you might get different results, for example, if you discharge them at a full amp or at 200 milliamps. Um, I didn't want to do full amp because I felt like that was too much, but I also didn't want to do like 300 or 500 milliamps because then the test would have run really long. And finally, this isn't a disclaimer so much as just something you should know. This is not a paid endorsement. Um, no one paid me to do this. In fact, I only did this because I was looking for the best NAMH cells for my money. And kind of stupidly, to do this testing, I spent about 100 bucks on all of these cells. Especially, I mean, like I said, the Enloop Pros, I think, were 30 bucks. That's ridiculous. I mean, that was the bulk of it right there. I don't really even need this many cells, especially not the crappier ones. I mean, these are probably just going straight in the garbage because they suck. So I talked briefly about the packaging insofar as this shitty packaging here. Most of the other packaging was fine and pretty much what you'd expect. This is like cardboard, uh, or just plastic clamshells with the covers that just rip off. And that's fine. You know, that kind of packaging is really easy to open. The Amazon cells were a little weird in that they actually came with, uh, this, is, this is the operating instructions for the charger. They didn't come with that. But uh, the Amazon cells came in this box, which is kind of big for uh, just four cells. Seems kind of wasteful to me. I mean, this, this would be fine, right? You don't need to really protect them from damage or anything. So that was a little irregular. And like I said, I bought uh, 16 of these EBL cells and they came in carrying cases, which I like. I mean, these were the cheapest ones and they come with these little cheap carrying cases, which are reusable. Um, and it even has authenticity stickers on it for some reason, which seems unnecessary, but sure. You know, I mean, and you can see I have all my other batteries in these kind of cases. I mean, these are really cheap. I think it was two bucks for six of them shipped from China. And they just really helped keep them organized. And I label them all. Uh, so if they're charged, I point the positive side that way. If they're dead, I point the positive side that way. Uh, I got that idea. That wasn't my own idea, but I got a few of these that came with stickers a while ago. And uh, yeah, they say charge and dead. Well, anyway, thanks for watching my very long review and rant about nickel metal hydride batteries. Um, not the most interesting thing in the world, but if you have a lot of devices you need to power and you don't want to use alkalines and keep uh, paying for those over and over again, uh, yeah, I mean, go for the EBLs. They're probably cheaper than some alkalines. <laughs>